if we're being honest, every single diabetic out there has had a moment or moments or sometimes for most of us, we have a moment at least once or twice a week where we kind of get frustrated about being diabetic. Uh, we have a bit of a breakdown, we just hate it, it's inconvenient, it's annoying. Treatments are pain in the backside, testing blood sugar all the time is a nuisance. And it gets frustrating. On Saturday, I had a massive eye opener and it led to a little bit of a regret as well. Just before setting out on a road trip, grabbing something to eat and having breakfast in Weatherspoons, and somebody seen me inject insulin into my arm, which is a bit unusual for me because I used to do it quite discreetly. I guess lately I've just been a bit more open about doing my insulin. Usually it's sometimes like behind, under the table, turned to the side, a little bit facing away from people. For some reason, unknown to me on that day, I just decided to lift up the shirt, go to the top of my arm. Someone sitting just across from me there, seen me inject and just started talking. It was an older man, I think probably 60-ish, maybe 70. And he started talking to me, asking, is that insulin? How many times a day do you do it? Anyone who knows me knows not to distract me from my food. So I wasn't being rude to the guy, I just answered quite bluntly and just tried to get my food. It was a huge eye-opener because he told me he'd been diabetic for 40 years. 40. I've been diabetic for less than 20 years, that's less than half the time he has. The changes I've seen have been unreal. I'll get to that in a moment. Why do I regret this breakfast? Why do I regret this meeting? I should have got my camera out. I really wanted to talk to him more. I really wanted to get to know him a bit and see what's been some of the problems he's been through with his diabetes, how everything's changed over the years from treatment to access to a doctor, prescriptions, measuring your blood glucose, all kinds. It's been playing on my head for the last two or three days since it happened. I mean, just thinking about the things that have changed since I was diagnosed at 10 years old, 11 years old, I don't know. Monitors have got smaller, they've added more functions to them as well. I, I see people now with pumps and monitors that you wouldn't even know they had. You can say you get a disc about the size of a 50p that just goes on your arm and you can just tap it with a monitor whenever you want to check your blood sugar. I mean, seriously, look at this. This is one of the first blood glucose machines. It, this is actually the second generation that I couldn't find a picture of the first generation, but this is available only in doctor's offices. Uh, it was £495 be installed into the doctor's office and patients would only get access to it when they went for their appointment. Before then, people were just testing by peeing on a little bit of, uh, I can't remember what it was called, but it's a piece of paper, basically like your keto strips now. It doesn't give you a measurement in numbers, it just tells you whether there's sugar present or not, or over a certain amount of sugar present. It's insane how you're supposed to treat diabetes like that. People wear pumps under the shirt that you'd never know existed. Looking into it and doing some research over the weekend, the first insulin pump was like the size of a freaking microwave. You wore it on a backpack. So it wasn't that exactly practical to walk around with this microwave strapped to your back. It was mainly for in hospitals, but if you wanted to take one home, you had to sign a waiver to say that you're going to test your blood sugars regularly. You had to stay in hospital for a week while you got used to the machine. Let's not mess about here, it was genuinely a machine, not like a little tiny little plastic thing like the, with the technology of a pager just strapped to you. It's a big, big machine. You even had to have a psychological test just to see if you were okay to have an insulin pump. Now you can pretty much just ask and get one. I mean, at least in the, in the UK, we can just get one on the NHS. Obviously in America, it depends on, on your insurer and things like that. But it's phenomenal when you think the changes I've seen. Monitors are smaller and, and more practical and easier to carry around. Insulin is fast acting now. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, when I was first diagnosed, I had to inject 30 minutes before I ate, and they were the longest 30 minutes of the day. But when I'd come home from school, do my homework, get changed, and my mum would cook tea, when I was first diagnosed, there'd be a couple of times when she'd forget to give me that 30 minute warning and it'd be like, oh, it's almost ready. I had to wait, it would be ready and I could smell it and I could see it. But I had to inject my insulin, I had to wait 30 minutes and then I could eat it. Now, it's like, just I can do it five minutes before. So, you know, I can carb count bread now and then make a sandwich. It's like, carb count, inject, make, then make a sandwich, then eat it straight away. I mean, there's no waiting around at all. Whereas beforehand, I'd have to think, 
I might do half a sandwich in half an hour, but I'd be hungry then. And then inject, wait the half an hour, and then eat. If I was doing my job and I would have to wait half an hour, I just couldn't do this job. End of period. Anyone who works in sales, especially like somewhere like car sales as I do, very, very fast paced. Like you just eat as and when you get a chance. It's not like you don't have a lunch hour that you go and have something to eat on. You you get to eat when there's no customers about. So literally I'd just say, right, okay, I've got a quiet 15 minutes, I'll just go grab something to eat, calm down quickly, inject, carry on. And there's even sometimes it's been a bit risky where I've injected at half of it, a customer's coming in and I've had to leave my lunch. So obviously the blood sugar's dropping then because I haven't carb counted right or before I started carb counting, I just hadn't eaten enough to balance that out. My first monitor was big and ugly and I had to keep it in my school bag and it didn't even light up. I couldn't test in the dark. So before I went to bed, there was like lights on or I woke up in the middle of the night and needed the test. I had to put the lights on and then check and blood sugar. Just basic things like that. So I really wish I'd got my camera out and put my food to the side and just in Weatherspoons there and then just they kind of interviewed the guy because there's so much I want to know. I want to know the changes that he went through, what it was like when he was diagnosed. I mean, did they diagnose it straight away? I was misdiagnosed. I first thought that the stomach migraines and I had to like, eat foods about E numbers and things like that. It wasn't until later turned out to be diabetes. This was only recent compared to how long ago he was diagnosed. So did you catch it straight away? Did you think it was something else? How long was it before they realised it was diabetes? If anyone knows someone who's been diabetic for 30, 40, 50 years plus, please get in touch with me and let me know. I would love to just sit down with you and have a conversation, the camera's on, and just see what you've been through, what complications you suffered from, and different treatments you've been through, and what's been the highlights and the lowlights, what have you been excited about? I mean, now we get excited because we hear about growing pancreases from stem cells and smaller pumps, longer lasting insulin, all kinds. We live in a technologically advanced age. Things progress and move on a lot faster. Look at smartphones where they were 10 years ago and where they are now, the worlds apart. I'm excited to see if that passes over into the world of medicine. These are exciting times to be alive. We shouldn't get frustrated about having diabetes and being diabetic. We are so lucky to live in this day and age. People lived through World War I and World War II. Um, I can only imagine how limited the access to medication was then, when even food was rationed. We will never know what it's like to go through that. Okay, so there are some places in the world where they still do live like that. And I'm so grateful to be in a country where doctors and medication is so readily available to me. Thanks again. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, share. Peace.